Welcome to the Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Richard Gear. Uh, Doug is actually doing some yeoman service. He's behind the cameras today, so you won't see him. But we have two of our people that are like that are mostly behind the camera are now in front of the camera. We're excited to have Derek Marshall and Jeff Conklin with us today Thank you. Uh, on the show. And um, this is really kind of more of a, uh, a testimony kind of a show as to why and how you became young earth creationist, correct? My, we're we're yes. getting the theme of that? That's what I understand. And this is, it's interesting because as I was looking through things they had written down, things they had taught, we've talked about, uh, quite different approaches to, uh, through their lives and how they became there. And I guess, um, Derek, maybe we'll start with you. You're on the outside, we'll work into Jeff, and, and maybe we'll, we'll, go, we'll feed back and forth here a little bit as we go on. So Derek, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what, what, uh, what bra uh, basically going against the grain to become not only a Christian, but a young earth creationist, which is really... Yeah, well, I definitely went against the grain, that's for sure. But uh, it's a little bit of a coincidence that uh, um, I was actually saved at a very young age when I was seven here in Lansing. I'm not originally from Lansing, I'm from Battle Creek, Michigan. And uh, well, there, there was a time when my mother was in the hospital for a long period of time and I had to live with my aunt. And my aunt uh, lived here in Lansing, as I said, and she was a, a devout Christian, attended South Baptist Church and, uh, with her husband and my two cousins. And so while I was living there with her, there was a day that uh, uh, she prayed with me and uh, accepted Christ. And I had this vision, this very clear vision of Christ entering my heart and being inside my heart. Wow, and you were seven years old. Seven years old. Okay. And uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. And uh, uh, throughout that time I was with them, I uh, uh, heard a lot of Bible stories. Um, uncle, my Uncle Jim used to tell me Bible stories. Of course, Aunt Pat told me Bible stories. Got my first exposure to the Word at that time. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, after I went back home, it was back to the same old grind and stuff like that. So, um, but that was definitely a seed planted. And uh, I've always felt um, saved. I've always felt protected and led by, by the Lord, even though um, my my feet have wandered over the course of okay. sometimes in my in my uh, adult life. We'll get to that. Okay, we'll get to Jeff and you had very kind of a very different uh, coming to this, this this position. So yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the early st stages or whatever. You know? Well, I kind of grew up in a church. Went to you church. Okay. My my mom would take us to church, etc. Sure. You know, and um, uh, my dad actually stayed stayed home mostly. He didn't. You know his. Not even Christmas and Easter. He wasn't even a priester, you know. He wasn't a so, priester. Yeah. You know, maybe a, maybe a funeral or a wedding. But um, uh, but my mom was diligent. Made sure we got up for church and went to church on Sunday. But I really didn't understand the gospel. I didn't know who Christ was. I I didn't grasp anything. Maybe I wasn't sure. paying attention, etc. Um, but uh, you know, as I grew up, I just kind of started looking in the teenage years. You started looking for excuses not to go to church. And got a job and, and had late hours sure. on Saturday night. And I was like, eh, I'm too tired. I'm not going to church. Yeah. So um, so kind of started to drift away from anything God uh, involved or, or, or related to God at that point. And went to college, went to um, Ferris State for a while. And, uh, you know, just basically partied. And, <laughs> you know, God was like the last thing I wanted to hear about. Right. And so, uh, you know... By the time I basically had to drop out of college, you know, there was sort of this, God was, I think, at work still in my life because I would, uh, I would just see little glimpses. I remember pretty, seeing it. Pretty much you can guarantee he was at work. But yeah, he was at no, work. We have to go him. through some, a, very, a <laughs> lot of strange things to get us to where we need oh, to yeah. get to go. I look so, back now and yeah. I see times where I could have been dead. Yeah. Oh, I was in college and stuff like that, too? and oh, yeah, and, well, yeah. And I just look back and I say, Lord, you were, you were there. You were actually. I could have been dead here. I could have been dead here, and you, and you just were there, even though I didn't deserve it. You know what I mean? Um, so later on, uh, kind of dropped out of college and kept on partying and whatever, and um, met my. Uh, girlfriend who would become my wife and the mother of my kids and everything else and we'd kind of moved in together and my journey to becoming a Christian in the first place was sort of I got tricked because <laughs> because God you know we would laze around smoke a joint etc you know and um, 
and watch documentaries and stuff on, and we were fascinated with like the supernatural. So um, there used to be this show called Sightings on Discovery I remember, Channel. I remember and and that show. Sci actually, Sci Fi Channel. And, yeah. uh, you know, there'd be UFOs and, and witches and ghosts and, you know, yeah. prophecy. And prophecy was the thing that got me because I saw a documentary on the History Channel and it was about Israel. And it was about how the Bible had. Um, I was watching stuff about Nostradamus and Edgar Cayce and oh, all these gosh, other ones, yep. and uh, they had this thing about Bible prophecy. And I start, and I was like, "This can't be true." So I dug out my Bible from when I was a teenager, the one yeah. they give you when you do your professional faith and all that. And I was looking there. I was like, in Hosea and Ezekiel, it says, "Yes, they're going to come back to the land after a long time." Right and be gathered from all nations and it happened 1948 yeah, and so that started me on my journey to start studying the bible and from there i hadn't really even thought about creation evolution none of that i just took evolution for granted because that's yeah, what i learned yeah so 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 you uh, you actually made a profession of faith but it was not real at all if you're telling me not it wasn't to real. me yeah. not to me maybe i said the words and god took it seriously Maybe you, take you know what I mean, word. but but yeah. but I knew that I by the time I really became a Christian, it was after a year, a few years at least of study, and I got to the point I got an argument with a guy about Islam. <clears throat> Islam has a Jesus, oh, yeah. but it's mm -hmm. not the Jesus of the Bible. <laughs> it's just a prophet. He's just a man, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I basically said, no, that's not what the Bible says about Jesus. The Bible says Jesus is God. And I kind of surprised myself. Oh. And I was like, wait, I actually believe that Jesus is God. So, so maybe there was a latent believer in despite yourself. Right. All right, so, so back to Derek a little bit. Derek, you, you said you wandered off. What, did you go through the same kind of odyssey, teenage years and stuff like that, or adult, or what happened? I had, my whole life's been an odyssey. Well, well not, we won't but, go into that too much. Yeah, we're not going to talk about my entire life. Nobody wants to hear yeah. about that. But so, my growth uh, in the 70s and 80s, um, I attended uh, Catholic school, public school, um, and fortunately, I ended up in Christian school. And uh, my, my, unfortunately, I, I did dabble in alcohol a little bit in in a very very young age. Um, yep. and I'll say before we went back to church and went back to and got involved in this wonderful church up in Kalkaska, Michigan, Evergreen Bible Baptist Church, and they had a little ACE school. Uh, okay. There that I attended from 10th grade to 12th grade. That's where I received my Bible education, which okay. actually ACE schools, you get a formalized cor uh, curriculum of New Testament survey, Old Testament survey. Plus, I learned quite a bit about the, the Bible uh, from when, you were in high school? when I was in high school. Yeah. Okay. So, and they make it may make you at the time they make you, but we memorize scripture, yeah. whole passages of scripture. Which I can't cite now, but I, I know them. I know <laughs> the scriptures. Here, if I hear them, I know where they're at in the Bible. Yeah. Well, uh, so um, that was my my real hardcore basis in under because I got a lot of preaching. We went to the church. We were in church every time the doors were open. I was involved in all the ministries, all of the different activities of the church. I was very much involved. So I got a lot of good preaching, a lot of good uh, depth, in-depth word, because it was a fundamental Bible-believing preaching church that so I was did, in. Was it that time where both of you, I'm going to say, when you, when you started, you surprised yourself. Um, I'm just kind of curious as to, let me see, uh, what started getting you, there's a lot of people who are Christians. And Jeff said something very interesting before, he says, you really almost have to be a Christian to be a creationist. And I agree with that, if you take the whole logic there. Even though there are Jewish people, it's in their Bible, obviously, the, the, the Old Testament, uh, you know, or they would call the Torah, you know, the, the book of Genesis. And there are, there, there, are, there are many Jewish people that actually do believe it, although there are many, maybe they call themselves Jewish people, but they're maybe Jewish in name only, they don't really believe it. Any more than there's a lot of Christian people, they go to church, but they don't really believe in the tenets of, 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 the, of the Christian faith either. But um, what I was getting at is, is that you're, there are certain things that begin to move you into not only being... A uh, strong believer, um, but also got you into the uh, the idea that no, it, it it it's important for the Bible to be true from the very yeah. first verse. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, right. how am I going to believe it? Well, I was going to I was going to get right yep. into that. Um, so why don't we give the, me the early '80s? Yeah. The early '80s um, condition of creationism. I'm sure you guys are very well aware. Gap theory, theistic evolution. 
mixed in with some literal three day or literal seven day creation. Um, uh, I heard all of that. It was all being preached. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't really satisfied with any of it. I took it by faith that God created the the world by in seven days, but uh, and I, but I was searching and I and what I was going to say was. We used to go out calling every week, and I'd go door to door and uh, talking about Christ, talking to people about Christ. And I was always hoping, please don't ask about the creation. Please <laughs> okay. don't ask about yeah, that. Yeah. Because I have no idea of what to tell you on that. I wasn't satisfied. But you knew there was an issue coming up. There was an issue. You knew there was something about okay, that's And that's, that was the, the burden that I have, uh, have been given. That's always been my burden to make some sort of sense because I'm a math and science guy, I always, always have been, right. to try to make some sense about what I learned in public school and what I learned in Christian school about the creation. I needed to, to resolve that. And it's been a very, it's been a burden of mine. Yeah, I know he's got some interesting, we've had you on to talk about some, yeah. of the, some of the theory stuff. And Jeff, what about you too? The, the, what, so what brought you, you, well, you actually went through a whole odyssey with, we got married. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you watched these shows, and, and you, you actually talked about how you surprised yourself, but you know, this is really true. Right. But you went through you went through a divorce, right? And, yep. it was and that was really the catalyst. What you that, go into that? that uh, yeah. You know, after I got to the point where, uh, you know, me and my my ex wife now kind of drifted apart, as as you're prone to do, especially when Christ isn't at the center of your relationship, yep. and you both have your own interests, and you're kind of in competition. And I knew that wasn't the, the right way, but there was no way to focus because we were both going our own way. And Christ was taking hold of me at this point, and I knew it, you know. Um, and I, I, but I never had the like the courage to get serious. Right. And after the divorce, I was just sitting by myself, and I was like, I just kind of heard not an audible voice, but I just knew God was saying. Your way isn't quite working out, is it? You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah. I was like, you know what? Nothing to lose now. <laughs> I give up. I surrender. You're in, you're you're the boss. And from that point on, I basically mm -hmm. gave my life to Christ. But it wasn't like I gave my life. It was like He took it. You know, mm -hmm. that was more what happened. I think what most happened. people come to have a real awakening with Christ realize they made. And they, they, they jumped on, but it was like they were grabbed. It was, it's, mm -hmm. we, under, we understand this. We don't want to get into the theological points. Of it's a paradox. Right but it's, it's, it's this living paradise, a high paradox, but it is a paradise too. But it's yep. a, you, when, when you come to Christ, you realize, I had to come to Christ, but yet I came to Christ. Yet, yep. yet I understand Paul's words. says, I live yet, not I yet. Christ, you're trying to right. figure out words how to do it. It's really difficult unless you've yep. experienced it. And I, so I know exactly anybody who's been gone to that. It's it's really amazing. So, what what did you say? Let's say that oh, get back to you for just a second because you mentioned I'm in your outline. Your wife is sort of a civilizing influence because you are a party guy, right? And that kind of got you off of some of that. And that, that but did she ever become a believer? Or, or no, you, not at this point. No, okay, okay. Um, spiritual, not religious. Yeah, type, one of those. Type okay. and I, you know, but it moved you in a direction that was actually served as a woman does. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, as a woman will do. That's, that's there's no doubt about and, it. And that does clear your mind a little bit when you can lay off the sauce yeah. a little bit and yeah. get and and dial back the drug use and stuff like that. You start to think. You you get out of the cloud. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because you're in a fog when you're in that. You're self medicated. You're yeah. you're not facing life. And then suddenly, absolutely, when you get off that a little bit, you can actually face life. And with God, you can really face life. And you don't need all these crutches around because He is the all in all, you know? Well, and so, uh, you know, and I got to the point, I, again, I hadn't really thought about creation, evolution, but it was a question because I had heard some preachers and teachers, kind of how I, I was converted was, um, I, I started studying the Bible because I, as I said, got interested in prophecy and stuff like that yeah, mm -hmm. and started to listen to preachers on the radio. Uh, Moody Radio, Moody Radio is, uh, they've got a, a, a station over near Muskegon in Zealand. And I used to listen to Moody you Radio. Really, you were living up there at the time then? Yeah, I was in Muskegon, Muskegon. Uh, Michigan, which is on the west side. And you were up in Kalkaska. Right. Yeah, that's so, where I graduated okay. high school. All right. yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, can you, so continue. Yeah. So I would listen to some preachers, teachers, uh, there are various ones, and every once in a while they would tackle the creation evolution issue. 
And I started to become convinced that evolution is not tenable. Okay. Uh, you know, just from their preaching, and they made sense. You know, I was like, wow, you know, how can... And then the other thing was, not only scientifically, but biblically, it doesn't fit. Because you're, there are certain things in the Bible, in the Genesis account, and the creation account, that just do not mesh. Although, I started out as sort of a theistic evolutionist. You know, I thought, I was reading Genesis, and I was like, yeah, the fish were first, you know? And then sure. the land animals, that goes with evolution, sure, no problem. Mm -hmm. You know, but then you start, it's kind of like, if you just stay on the surface, that's okay. Oh, yeah, But yeah. once you just scratch yeah. one time, all of a sudden you just start to see the maggots and stuff. Yeah. You're crawling around in there. That's a good this way to put it. This thing is rotten, you know what I mean? It's just, no, this can't be. That's a good be, way to you know, put this it. Can, this yeah. cannot be. So you went through the same thing, because you were talking about some of the various well, things. Yeah, were yeah we're, not, we're not quite there yet with me. We've got a Marine Corps to get through. And okay. also a, a marriage and a divorce myself and some pretty heavy drinking. But fortunately, um, I was still, uh, I went through kind of an agnostic phase, more than kind of, for a little while. Oh, yeah. um, I still uh, felt Christ's um, protection. Um, I still had a conscience very much. So I would only go so far with certain oh, things. See. But I was still fascinated with, I still was fascinated with the way the world worked. Fascinated with things like magnetism. You know, trying to figure out um, what is it. Magnetism to me at the time seemed kind of magical in a way. And uh, I was trying to figure out, you know, is that tied to God somehow? It kind of is in you a know? way, but you really think, I mean, it, it is you know? a strange force. But I didn't have any, any way of thinking about magnetism that could tie it to God. And uh, so... It, around about 1995, and this was uh, after my divorce, because I went on kind of a, a hiatus from, from thinking when I got married and was really trying to be in a marriage, you know, oh, living, yeah. and this, this time I was out in California. And uh, so after that marriage ended rather quickly, um, I started uh, really had time to think about what went wrong, think about myself, um, think about kind of like what Jeff was talking about, really trying to meditate on what, what where is my life going? And I started getting kind of, I want to call them visions, but they are visions. I started seeing these patterns in my mind. And uh, the pat they just wouldn't go away. And I ended up having to start writing them down and drawing them and writing them down. I've got tons of scrap papers where I'm writing these right, things down right. and writing the ideas, the impressions these, these patterns were given to me. And then um, I actually started, um, I, you know, I'm pretty good at math, or I'm a lot better than I was then. But even then, I started working with... Um, Fundamental shapes, circles, stuff like that, sine waves, because I was an electronics technician. Yeah. I started kind of connecting them in different fundamental ways, you know, and, and trying to make some sort of pattern, see if I can work something out, you know. And I, I, I got a little ways with that, but not very far with that, until basically um, around about 1997, I'd moved back to Michigan, and uh, the drinking had gotten bad enough where I had to focus on sobriety. Um, so I basically, in order to become sober, I had to follow the 12-step method. And my higher power had to become God and Jesus Christ again. So I had to rededicate my, myself to Jesus Christ. And what I did is, what I put upon my altar, on the altar, for that was this, this special knowledge that I thought that I had. But I had nothing to show for it. Just a bunch of drawings and sloppy yeah. stuff, you know, stuffed in a drawer somewhere. I put that aside. I put that away and didn't think about it for a few years. Focusing on sobriety. And I've celebrated 16 years of sobriety as of just this last month. Congratulations. So, yes. Yeah, gradually. So, uh, but after, like Jeff said, after the fog clears, after I can think clearly, and I started, I decided, well, you know what, I'm going to go back to school. You know, and there was a lot of practical reasons for me to go back to school. I was interested in engineering and physics. Um, I could get a better job, you know, and also I could pursue these ideas but have some analytical math capability to actually figure them out. And uh, I would actually have a little bit better understanding of, of the physical world if I pursued these, this, this idea. So I went for a physics degree. And uh, while I was at Michigan State, right at the end, right before I graduated, uh, that's when I discovered the creation function. Okay. Yeah. Which is my, my magical pattern that I was seeing, but
but it actually had math and numbers associated with it that I could actually use. And we can talk, talk a little about bit that. about that. Yeah, we've got, we've got a got little. shows on this yes. already because it's very in-depth and very intricate, we, but it's very cool to know. What were, let's say, either one of you, maybe your top three reasons for moving, let's say, away from it? from a day-age theory or a gap theory or a theistic evolutionary position uh, into, well, I mean, you basically come to a knowledge of Christ, both of you. So you, right. the fog is lifted, Christ is in your heart, and somehow you get awake because there's a lot of Christians we talk about, they go to church, they are believers, but they really don't understand the significance or importance or don't, don't really deal with it. And uh, maybe it's because you guys went through so much you know, and, and messed it up so bad. You know, maybe not, I'm not saying, there are people who messed it up a lot worse than that, oh, yeah. and I know my own self was pretty messed up too back in long, long ago. But it's still, you got to this point, and a lot of people never go much further. Now, as a math science guy, I get that. Uh, there's a lot of people think that creationists are all about science, and we do, Doug and I talk a lot about the science, we love the science that's involved in it, but there's a, there's a revelatory aspect to it as well, and I was wondering how that dealt with you. Maybe you could tell us maybe your top two or three or maybe top five things that really kind of bullet point them if you want to as we go well, along here that really brought you to this point. Like, you know? like I was saying, you know, I, I would hear people preach and teach. And their main focus as preachers and teachers um, of, this, of the Word of God, their main focus was the fact that if the Bible is not true from the first, like you were just saying, right. from the first verse, then how, where do you draw the line? Where, where is it that we can say, yes, this happened? Um, a lot of people take Genesis 1 through 11 and they say this is sort of quasi-myth. It's yeah. sort of a mytho-historical account. Which, right, or allegorical. Or, yeah, yeah, some kind of a, and I never understood that because it seems like an oxymoron when you say, well, this is historical, but it's also myth. So it didn't happen, but it did. But no, myth. where are you going with this? You know so what I mean? So your logic so, was just plain. So I was like, no, you know, there are certain things in scripture that are not going to make any sense unless this account is true. And I believed what they were teaching. Uh, most of them that I was learning from were, were um, uh, six day creationists like Adrian Rogers, uh, the late Adrian Rogers, Baptist preacher, used to be um, president of the, of the uh, Southern Baptist Convention, etc. cetera. Um, John MacArthur, who's good, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's out on the West Coast and he's a six day creationist. Um, and then I, would, I started to run across um, creation ministries like uh, uh, Answers in Genesis, uh, Institute Creation Research, etc., CMI, uh, Creation Ministries sure. International. Yep. And, um, you know, as I learned more and more about the scientific um, robustness, I guess, of the, uh, of the, of the creation, um, basically a theory, I mean, it's a theory of origins, really but it's biblical yeah. and and it goes along it's so i mean i just love it when they find a dinosaur carcass that looks like it was <laughs> fossilized a few years ago you yeah. know what i mean yeah. like the one they that ankylosaurus or whatever that they recently found yeah, right. and it was like yeah we could do this basically it looks like a statue in a museum of of this thing you know and i'm thinking and they have to do all these gymnastics to figure out, well, how did this get preserved so well for this billions of, or this millions of years that it's been here? And I'm sitting back going, wow, this is so nice. <laughs> I can just sit here, and I, I expected that. I expected that. So you can never, I mean, for people who are listening, you never have to be embarrassed or, you know, oh, if, if I believe in six-day creation, I'm a weirdo or something. No. The science is there, it's biblical, you're on solid ground. And I feel like I'm on solid ground. Yeah, okay. You know? And so, Derek, what about you? So My, you're, uh, you're shaking your head yes a lot about what he was saying. Yes, I, I, I'm really down with what he was saying. And that's, and that's all about, especially the soft tissue that they found with that dinosaur. It just blows you away, doesn't it? But uh, soft for tissue, me. Unfossilized bone, yeah. cartilaginous material, that was globin. A, uh, what else do you want that did, did belies 65 million year yeah. at the latest, you know, right. for the dinosaurs? But, anyway. but for me, is my, my, uh, uh, my big moment for creation came similar to Doug's, is that through a personal investigation of the facts, I had developed at least the, uh, the analytical capability mathematically to, to dive deeper into what I've always been thinking about 
and came up with the creation function. Now, in a nutshell, creation function is a mathematical function derived from scripture that describes the creation. And it cre creates a, a logarithmic spiral pattern that makes seven full rotations. And we know from the Bible that the Bible says the earth was created seven days. We know that that seven days is actually seven rotations of creation. And in my personal research, I've correlated the, uh, the numerical pattern or the, the table of numbers that's generated by this, this logarithmic pattern to the periodic table of the elements and also the Fibonacci series, which is a common, uh, well-known uh, 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 pattern that's seen in nature. The growth pattern of, in nature is, is a lot. Okay, so my, I have, I have uh, many, many smoking guns, but here's the first smoking guns that uh, um, the exponential function, which is from the uh, logarithmic spiral pattern, is related to energy. I was laying in my bed in, in you know, Michigan State University, my dorm room bed, and I'm thinking about this, and I'm reading, I'm doing my homework, actually, uh, for physics, and I see this expression of energy and uh, in the uh, logarithmic. And I say, that, there it is right there, because I just, the creation function is the logarithmic pattern. Okay. So there's the first one. Then the second smoking gun is the seven-day creation story mathematically correlates to the periodic table of the elements, and also the orbits of the planets. So when I saw that, because I had, because I was going to take some astronomy classes, and I had an astronomy book that I had been paging through, I was looking at the time it takes light to reach the planets, and that also follows the same pattern from the creation function. And then I found that one of the big ones is I found the creation function numbers in the flood story, just the numbers, bam, 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 you know, and you just can't. That was really the one that 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 said that you know what. Um, the Lord's really shown me something here, and I'm just going to, to, to dive headlong into it. So, and I have. Um, but you had already been a creationist by the time. We've got like a minute to go, so we're right. going to get into Jeff. Get your uh, top like couple bullet points for what brought you to the to the young Earth creation position. Well, I, again, I like the um, I just like the fact that I don't have to do a bunch of gymnastics with scripture to try to um, fit it in with. Uh, you know, with modern science, quote unquote. Right. Um, you know, when God says in the Ten Commandments, just as I worked six days and rested on the seventh, so you shall work six days, rest on the seventh. That's a one-to-one -one comparison. Now, I don't have to say, well, the, the, the definition of day changes, changes definitions in the middle of that sentence. You know, yeah, I don't right. have to do all that. All I have to do is say, you know what, God, you did this in six days. And all the science, we don't know exactly all the answers, starlight and time and all these things, but I take it on faith because the word of God is the authority. Well, yeah, it's like and, some people said to me, why did it take so long for, uh, for him to make it? And we said seven days, and as he was creating patterns as far as that goes. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, listen, we've we got to wrap this up, so uh, I hope you enjoyed our program. There's a lot more. We want to have you guys on again because it was so really good. And I think we're just kind of scratching the surface as far as that goes. So. We'd like to welcome you and uh, thank you for joining us on the Revolution Against Evolution.